My name is Russell Holbrook. I am an author and I am here to do the AuthorTube Newbie Tag 2023.7.5.8 version 265. And um, I'm going by what I saw on Jenna Streety's channel and so I'm doing the 13 questions and so I'm going to have to consult my handy notebook here but here we go all right question number one how did i discover author tube well i discovered author tube through booktube i've been watching booktube for quite a while and so i heard someone mention author tube and i was like author tube a youtube channel that's author specific what and so i really loved the idea and when I found the real thing I loved it even more and it's really awesome I wanted to like be a part of this for a while but I've just been absolutely terrified <laughs> and so like every day I'd be like I want to make the video and I'd tell my wife and then I just wouldn't do it because I was scared but here I am trying to like push through that fear and you know join the community and um i have notes please excuse me and my my googly eyes all right here we go question number two what genre or genres do you write in i predominantly write in horror and i came up and bizarro horror which if you're not familiar with bizarro horror it's just weird horror like that goes off the deep end and i like to say that bizarro not only pushes the envelope it burns the envelope and make you eat the ashes and chase it down with shots of clorox and so i like to write in bizarro horror although i'm really like finding my voice now and some more like not as bizarre just more like mellow atmospheric horror and i write a column called the log book of terror for a wonderful blog called horroraddicts.net and this is really my favorite style to write in right now i don't know if you would call that traditional horror or like spooky atmospheric horror but um, I totally dig that kind of stuff, but I still enjoy like the bizarro and the extreme stuff too. And I also write poetry and I write memoir. And um, yeah, and I've also done some romance, but we won't get into that right now. So, um, but mainly just horror and weird horror. And uh, I, I just, I love fiction that has a lot of emotion and atmosphere and so that's what I'm just gravitating to towards more and more all right number three what is your preferred writing style POV a category of story well <laughs> I just like third person past tense like he said she said you know, she stabbed him 5,000 times with a butter knife, that kind of thing. I guess it's, I don't know if third person omniscient is still a thing, but I like that. And I've tried to write in first person present tense a couple of times. It was an interesting experiment, but I just prefer the good old fashioned, like third person mainly. All right, number four, are you a plotter, planner, or a pantser? Um, I'm what I've heard referred to lately as a plantster because I do um, make notes and then I have an outline sort of but then I just usually go off the rails so I could have like a complete detailed outline and at some point I would end up deviating from it and that's just the way things seem to go so you know, oh, and the other thing is I've tr I've been like trying to like study structure and, you know, methods like save the cat and um, it's not really working for me. So I believe in the intuitive process or that's kind of what I've been forced to believe in because it seems like that's how it works out. 
I have difficulty with like following any sort of guidelines. So yeah, I hope some of you can relate to me there. Um, it's kind of frustrating sometimes. Okay, question five, are you published? Oh my God, I thought you would never ask. Check it out. This is Joy. This is my first book that I ever published. This was in 2015 and it's now out of print. I've changed the name and made significant changes to the story and the um, manuscript itself. And so it's going to be re-released at some point. This was my second one. My first, uh, I think this was a full length novel. This is also out of print as well. It's called The Water Babies. I learned a lot from criticism I received from that book and I'm really grateful uh, for that. And it's it, I was rewriting it, but I never finished it. Um, this is called The Distended Table and it is a Thanksgiving themed horror anthology that my friend Trevor Kennedy and I assembled and quasi edited i wouldn't really consider myself an editor but um, that's why we have on the spine unethically sourced and assembled by russell holbrook and trevor kennedy this just us being silly but like um i don't i mean everything we got was so well written that we didn't really have to do much editing um this is swan dongs there's a whole like long and hilarious backstory. I think it's hilarious anyway. But so my friend uh, Mick Collins and my other friend Christopher Grindstaff and I, we won a contest and our stories were subsequently published in this here book by the Mothers of Mayhem, uh, the wonderful ladies at the Mothers of Mayhem podcast. And uh, the print version is out of print temporarily at least but you can still pick up the ebook um, this is a short story slash poetry collection it's my holiday book the ghost of christmas ass and it is bizarro um, bizarro short story and a bizarro uh, several bizarro poems and it is as ridiculous as it looks what else Okay, we have, this is my memoir slash poetry collection. It is called Heroin is the Answer, a memoir of what I can remember. And this details um, my substance abuse issues in my early 20s. And obviously heroin is not the answer, but I thought it was at one point and I thankfully somehow survived and 20 some odd years later wrote a book about it and this is available and I also have one full-length novel called Lucifer and I don't have any copies of it <laughs> I thought I did but I don't have any copies of it and I don't have it pulled up on my Kindle oh why didn't I think of that oh well it's called Lucifer it's about um, a cat who it's about a house cat who seeks revenge on some teenagers and becomes a serial killer. So it's kind of like Friday the 13th meets Garfield, but they also reside in a bizarro dystopian future. So I guess it's kind of like a dystopian, but I refer to it as sub extreme suburban dark fantasy. That's what I like to call it. That's, um, was way way too much fun writing that one and um hopefully you'll look it up that's lucy fur fur with two r's thank you <laughs> oh my gosh uh, all right what's next number six what is your dream publishing house that would be right here grindhouse press oh my hair Grindhouse Press. Um, I've submitted to them several times, but have never been accepted. But they're so awesome. They published Full Brutal by Christopher Triana. I love that book. 
and um, also Ritualistic Human Sacrifice by C.V. Hunt. That's a classic of weird and disturbing and gross horror. And then Satanic Summer by Anderson Prunty. And also, I love that. It's very just completely over the top, insane. And um, just had a wonderful time reading both of those. And uh, Ritualistic Human Sacrifice is a good book to like start arguments with with your fellow book club members because they hated it but you loved it. Yep. There's also a poop statue, but we won't get into that. And so I would love to be published with them. They also published Wave and True Crime by Samantha K Kaleski. I am sorry, I can't remember how to pronounce her last name correctly, but those are also considered classics of the genre by many people. So much respect and love to Grindhouse. All right, what author tube related videos are on your channel? This is the first one. All right, number eight, when did you start writing? I actually started writing in the second grade when I was eight years old, or maybe seven years old. But um, that was when I got into it. Um, I wrote my first poem and my first short story in the second grade. That was in 1983. Don't tell anybody I'm really that old. All right. Oh, so I've always been into writing, but like um, in 2012, was, that was when I um, participated in NaNoWriMo and I was like, all right, let's do this thing for real. And then it took me three years to finish the first novella after the 2012 NaNoWriMo. Um, but my wife and my English teacher at the time were both like very enc encouraging and you know they kept suggesting that I give it a shot so I did and so here I am I never thought you know that I would seriously try to pursue writing but I'm really thankful that they encouraged me to go in that direction alrighty what was the first story you ever wrote that story in second grade was about the boys club versus the the girls club and the boys club murdered all the girls and while we were spending the night in a haunted house yep so those are the thoughts I was having in second grade I don't know what that says about me as a person I'm really peaceful though I swear okay what authors inspire you to write um I have like my favorites that I really like to read and just I just get inspiration like all the time though it's actually pretty amazing how many gifted writers there are and just there's so much excellent work to read you know and um, right now I'm reading a Bentley Little book and I find that very inspiring the uh, Oh, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce her name, but the wonderful author who wrote Tender is the Flesh, just the, the language in that book was was very inspiring, although I didn't finish it. Um, I just couldn't. And, uh, mm, but like, I don't know, you know, there's tons of just inspiring authors so I kind of get inspired almost by like everyone I read it just depends that's kind of a difficult question to answer I should have given that more thought beforehand <laughs> okay number 11 oh wait the real writers who inspire me the most are my friends you know my peers and like the indie authors who are really going for it like RJ Benetti and Matthew Vaughn and the aforementioned Grindhouse Press, like there's, um, you know, tons of like bizarre writers who are just like very dedicated, like Carlton Melick the Third. Then there's uh, John Skip, who's been like doing it forever, 
and um, the dudes who wrote Cannibal Fat Camp, I'm sorry, I'm totally like blanking on their names right now. But people like that who are like in it for the long term. Oh, Joanna Penn is very inspiring. And she's just very dedicated to her craft and to like getting her writing out there. And like, you know, there are more, but I just, I could go on for a long, long time now that the old wheels and the cranks and the cogs are turning so anyway let's move on all right number 11 do you schedule your writing sessions or write when you can i used to be diligent about writing every morning but then my work schedule changed and i'm not naturally an early riser and so now i mostly write on my phone like whenever i can like I can duck into a corner at work or something and write on my phone or um, I still write at home like occasionally like especially like out on the back porch that's a wonderful place to write especially now that the evenings are cooling down I really enjoy it out there but yeah just like try to make it a priority but but it, like work it in whenever I can. So making it a priority has kind of changed and that I don't really like write every single morning now, but it's like write something, at least something, no matter how small, like every single day. And just like, you know, having that in mind seems to help me stay on track, but not as much as I would like. All right, number 12, how and where do you write? Um, this is my room, this is my little corner, my, my computer and my desk and so I prefer being here but also on the back porch and then just random spots at work. And also I had never thought about this before but Michael Laron who's also like he has an incredible work ethic. And I've read uh, several of his nonfiction books. He's a very talented and inspiring writer. And so, you know, he's the one who I heard like phone writing. I got that from him. And so like also can write while standing in line or just like wherever, you know, just have the phone at the ready, have Google Docs pulled up and like, let's go for it. And so number 13, what do you look forward to most about being a part of AuthorTube? Well, I really look forward to being a part of the community and I do feel like I can make a contribution and I feel like I can bring something that I have not seen yet. And um, cause I'm dedicated to horror and also I love making music. And so I'm hoping to like blend that together somehow and um, just hopefully I'll have a unique take on things and um, we'll see where it goes but I'm really looking forward to learning and uh, just learning from my peers and meeting the wonderful people of AuthorTube and um, you know I've been around BookTube and you know, been watching like Cameron Chaney and Kasha for like a long time, but now that I'm finally getting into it, I'm hoping to like really interact even more with people who I really admire and um, just meet some excellent writers and learn as much as I can and like contribute as much as I am able to. And I'm just starting out now. I'm like, I don't know how to edit or anything um all like all the you know the film work i did was like 10 and like 13 years ago and so i don't know how to use any of the new equipment so i'm gonna have to learn all the tech stuff and um just to do my best as i go along so please be patient with me and you'll probably hear a lot of cat meowing and scratching in the background because I have the door shut and they're mad that they can't get in here and so that will be fun there will always be some some uh, cat sounds in the background hopefully 
Anyway, so I'm rambling, so I'm going to stop now. Thank you so much if you've made it through this whole video. Thank you. And hopefully I will see everybody again soon. All right, take care. Thank you. Bye.